Hello everybody and welcome to the webinar about the MPEG Power Module family. My name is Oliver Tam. I am Director of Product Management for Automotive Modules and I will explore today you the technology to build scalable and highly efficient traction inverters. In this webinar I will explore to you the four key attributes for power electronics in eDrive systems, which is reliability, which relates to rugged material stacks and high temperature cycling capabilities. And I will explore to you our double side sintering technology as well as our laser welding technology. Then efficiency, which relates to linear forwarding characteristics and low dynamic losses. And I will explore to you the advantages of silicon carbide MOSFETs together with very low strain ductance package designs. Then space. This relates to high power density, low RTH and low loss profile. And I will explore to you our direct press die technology and also show you our flexible cooler options. And last but not least, scalability, which relates to a flexible ship equipage and a package headroom. And I will explore to you our different IGBT and silicon carbon options and scalability in respect to the ship count. And if all four key attributes are fulfilled and optimized, the system is also optimized for costs. Let's start with reliability and I will explore to you our double side sintering technology as well as our laser welding technology. Semicron is the pioneer for sintering technologies in power electronics. We have close to 20 years experience in sintering technology. Mass production of the first sintered module started in 2009. Semicron has more than 30 patent families and already more than 1 million sintered modules are in field. In this already roughly 15 years old picture you can see a test where we rolled the substrate with sintered ships on top, proving the durability and stiffness of that link. In the micro sections, you see the setup of the substrate and the ships and the flex foil on top and the very thin sinter layers in between. These sinter layers provide high reliability and very low RTH to the system. Let me explain with this slide the difference between Zemicron's double side sintering technology and other means to perform the sintering. Usually sintering is performed by applying hard tools on top of the ships. While this results in good sintering layer underneath the ships, it leaves porous edges beside the ships. These porous edges are usually origins for contamination. Semicon is using a pressure chamber applying even pressure across the complete power hybrid, not leaving any unpressed areas on the power hybrid. With that, a homogeneous pressure is applied to the complete power hybrid, leaving no porous edges and no contaminations. Furthermore, it opens the path for 3D topology, so being able to sinter ships with different height on the same package. It also gives flexibility of the ship positions, as for different ship positions, no new sintering tools are needed. While our double side sintering technology provides very high reliable die attach, our laser welding technology provides very high reliable links between the auxiliaries and main terminals down to the substrate. As said, our lasering welding technology bonds the main terminals as well as the auxiliary terminals direct on top of the substrate. This is a very fast and very cost efficient process. It enables also very dense designs because in comparison to ultrasonic welding, no additional space is needed surrounding the welding area. And as you can see in the picture, we're creating very solid bonds between the terminal and the upper copper layer of the substrate.
Let's move on to silicon carbide MOSFET options in conjunction with very low strain inductance. This slide shows a direct comparison of silicon IGBT versus silicon carbide MOSFET options on a module scale. The module is configured to support an output power of roughly 250 to 300 kilowatts of output power based on an 800 volt battery system. We use in this comparison latest IGBT and latest silicon carbide technologies. In the pink box here are showing the typical operation area. For high power, there is no big difference between silicon carbide and IGBT. As you can see, that the voltage drop over the ships at the same current is roughly the same, so the dissipated power is the same. But the system is completely different behaving on low power. As you can see, if I'm only draining roughly 20% of the output power, then the voltage drop on the ships is by factors lower on silicon carbide ships than on IGBT. And this is purely due to the forwarding characteristics of the IGBT versus the silicon carbide devices. But I'm showing you a case study efficiency silicon versus silicon carbide. This time it's based on a 400 volt battery system, so 750 volt devices, but the output power is roughly the same as the previous comparison. This case study includes both the static as well as the dynamic losses of the module. We run a WLTP driving cycle. We apply two different switching frequencies, 10 kHz and 20 kHz, and we limited the switching speed to roughly 20 kV per microsecond, which is applicable to automotive applications. In red, you can see the losses of the IGBT module, while in blue, you can see the losses of the silicon carbide option. The driving cycle is exactly the same but the overall losses of the IGPT is significantly higher than the silicon carbide option. At 10 kHz switching frequency, the silicon carbide option is dissipating only roughly 23% versus the IGPT. With higher switching frequencies, it's even getting more extreme. But this all only works if you're able to switch fast as well. Our double side sintering technology with a flex foil on top enables very low strain inductance and with that enabling very fast switching. Both DC sides are put one over the other and with that the commutation loop is very small and the inner strain inductance of the substrate is roughly in the order of magnitude of 0.7 nanohenry. As we put both the DC plus and DC minus one over the other as well on the terminal, we can achieve overall strain inductance in the order of magnitude of two and a half nanohenry. With an appropriate capacitor, you can achieve an overall strain inductance of roughly six nanohenry. And with that, usually you can switch roughly two times faster than any other uh, application, or you can utilize 100 to 200 volt more DC voltage and with that, getting more power out of the same design. We now explore to you our direct press die technology and the flexible cool options for MPEG. Direct press die technology is based on the principle that there is no rigid joint between the substrate and the cooler underneath. Terminal connectivity is guaranteed by pressing directly on top of the ship where the heat is generated. By pressing on top of the ship, all cavities below the ships are flattened out, so there is only a need for very thin tin material between the substrate and the cooler, mainly filling the roughness of the materials. Furthermore, as there is no rigid joint between the substrate and the cooler, there is no thermal mechanical stress anymore between the substrate and the cooler itself. It also opens a wide flexibility for the cooler itself in terms of geometries and material. In this slide you see two options of coolers being applied to the impact module. 
In front you can see a copper pin fin option, while in back you see a clothes cooler. Material can be aluminum or copper or any other material chosen by the customer. Configurations can be set up to six pack or individual half bridges, as the generic building block of MPEG is a half bridge. Now we come to scalability and with that different ship configurations and flexible ship counts. As already said, the generic building block of MPEG is a half bridge. Per switch there are roughly 700 square millimeters available to be equipped either with IGBT plus free building diodes or with silicon carbide MOSFETs. The substrate can be either aluminum oxide or silicon nitride depending on the performance requirements. The module is designed for 750 as well as 1200 volt applications and can run up to 900 amp RMS. Strain ductance is with 2.5 nano Henry very low, which is due to its unique thermal design and very low strain ductance within the power hybrid. With that, the MPEG generic building block is very versatile for all e drive applications. To summarize, silicon carbide MOSFETs achieve high efficiency for e drive systems and are optimizing with that system costs. Semicon's double side sintering technology is key achieving high reliability for IGBT, but especially silicon carbide configurations. Silicon carbide material is very stiff and with that demands for the best sintering technology. Semicon's direct press die technology on the other side enables highest performance due to its low RTH together with a very flexible cooler design. And MPEG has it all. Thank you very much for your attendance and I'm open now for questions.